G'day YouTube and welcome to the first of my No Man's Sky Next series. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the Next 1.5 update and what's included in that and then we'll jump to some gameplay and I'll talk about my thoughts impressions on the game as well. Now let's jump straight into the patch notes. Now I'm not going to go through every single detail in this 1.5 patch because it is immensely massive and let's be honest this video would be so boring if I went through every little detail. But the, what I am going to do is I'm going to go through what I feel is important and what has really affected the gameplay since No Man's Sky launched a couple of years ago and what I think is really going to affect whether you want to buy it or not. So let's jump straight into it. We're going to look right now at the introduction and they talk a little bit about the full multiplayer experience, near unlimited base building, command of freighter armadas and a graphical overhaul those are the really big things that they touch on the multiplayer thing is probably the thing that's most talked about now i've got a little bit of gameplay to show you guys how that multiplayer has worked but in my experience the multiplayer is a really fantastic addition because this is one of the first things that hello games really had as an issue since the launch of the game and i feel like their communication with the community about multiplayer caused all the problems that have happened throughout this time they really had to overcome some adversity in the last two years to come up with this patch they had death threats, they've had a lot of hate from the community, they've been in regular contact with police about protection, and still overcoming this adversity to create the next patch I think is absolutely fantastic. So the multiplayer was a really key component of this patch because they really wanted to win back the fans and give them everything that they wanted, and I feel like they've really given us that in spades. So what we're seeing now is, and I'll just jump down to the multiplayer aspect of the patch notes, it says team up with a small group of friends, and I'll tell you now that that is four people total, so that's three eight friends on your team and each server, I guess you could call it a server, can hold a maximum of 16 players. Now I'm not sure if they've really implemented that completely at the moment but from what I can tell um, you can have a team of four players and then other people can actually join your team outside of or your game outside of that team and in that sort of way I suppose it's good there's kind of one host with a game and then everyone else is kind of joining that game in that environment. Um, the interaction with players outside of that four-man team I think aren't really the same I think that you kind of you see uh, it's something like a camera or something floating around and or an orb I think it is maybe and then you click on it um, and you can interact with it and I think eventually you can um, interact with those players the way you do with the other players on your team they said that they are fully yet to integrate that multiplayer system to be everything they want it to be um, but the introduction to the multiplayer I think has been really fantastic so far now it says here that you can build communal bases now farms and racetracks and and I haven't witnessed the racetracks yet, but that sounds really interesting to me. Uh, from what I can tell, there are a lot of new vehicles within the game, and I feel like the racetracks and multiplayer and those vehicles sort of combined together can be one part of the game that will be really fun for some people. And I think it's just something you can take completely separate to the story, completely separate to other experiences, and just play a completely building sort of style. Um, I might add right now, though, that they do have a type of game that's just basically, instead of joining to do the story or joining to do the campaign you can join simply just in a creative mode and uh, you can simply go in there like a game of Minecraft and you can create everything that you want as you want it and I think doing this in a multiplayer sort of experience is really fantastic because it is a voxel based game even though it doesn't look pixelated the way Minecraft and a lot of those games do and the the crafting tools that are involved in a No Man's Sky next patch um, are really fantastic and they've been updated to the point where I think everyone can really enjoy them a lot more thoroughly so we're gonna go on now now and have a look at the there's I've got epic space battles they and apparently you can prey on others in a sort of PvP manner I haven't witnessed that either but I uh, from what I can tell you can steal things from bases and uh, steal things from inventories and things like that and I think the space sprites thing kind of goes into a PvP manner as well um, they talk about community engagement and Galactic Atlas website I won't go too much into detail about that but basically they're finding a place where people can communally talk about the game and really add their own notes and locate and all those sorts of things within the game. Uh, this is the base building aspect. Um, so from what I've noticed, not only have they added a lot more to the base building and they've made it a lot more in depth, but they've also increased the capacity that you can have within your bases. I felt this was important because from what I can tell from No Man's Sky back when it was launched a couple of years ago, that people were creating fantastic and amazing looking bases, but they were relatively limited on the number of things that they could place within those bases. So they could only have a number of set pieces and then after after that they were at their total. Um, now it's almost limitless apparently in the number that you can have in there and not only that they've made the access to all of the crafting pieces a lot more accessible and 
one of the key components within the crafting system is I think it's like a Stargate style teleporter um, and that's that one that you're seeing right there and what that essentially does is it enables you to teleport from your home base to other places or on other planets and I think other star systems as well so you can go to a space station jump straight into that teleporter and go straight to your home base if you want to and that really makes your home base something that you can you can take a lot of pride in the building and you can call your home and you won't have to just leave it behind when you're exploring the universe because let's be honest no man's sky is so massive that's essentially what was happening to begin with so let's move on to what we've got so yeah it talks here about the teleporter online space station terminus contacted and this is how people are sort of teleporting between their bases and you can have multiple bases i just forgot to add that one you cannot have multiple bases and you can build anywhere so once upon a time in no man's sky it was just all about building in one set location and now they've done a fantastic job in just making it that you can just build your base anywhere you want and um, they'll, they'll touch a little bit more about that in the patch notes as well. They've added third person in the flying as well as third person for your character. So the third person view I think was really important since they added character customization and the character customization stuff is a little further down in the patch notes but they, they really wanted to sort of show off the things that you had. They wanted you to be able to see them on the screen and be really proud of them as well. So a lot of people like third person for this reason. You know if you've got a character that you think looks cool if you've got a ship that you think looks cool or other vehicles that you think look cool then I think you know as a player you probably want to be able to recognize that and look at that and be able to sort of enjoy seeing that as they go so the third person mode I think was just a, a nice touch um, but based on the amount of work that they put in the character models and the creation of the character um, characters and the character models then I think uh, the third person was probably an animate choice um, within that they've also added an emote system so you can do all the little standard emotes you know thumbs up and sorry and wave and all those sorts of things and here's your character customization they've got a picture of someone that kind of essentially looks like a stormtrooper I don't know if that was actually on purpose um, but within this character customization I'll show you guys some gameplay as well and I'll create a character for you to see but um, you get to choose between the races choose your headpiece your torso your armor your legs boots and backpack you get to choose color palettes you get to not only choose designs but you also get to you get to sort of choose between set designs that are already organized for you if you don't really want to go through everything but it is a very thorough character customization screen it is completely free you don't have to pay any in-game currency or anything like that to get there it's at every space station you can change as often as you want and i think this is just a fantastic addition to the game as well so jumping into freighters here um i actually just got my first freighter in my last play and I have to say that they've made freighters really something entirely different to the way it was uh, when the game initially launched. Now freighters are designed to not only be able to create and hold base stuff um, within that freighter, you can also send the freighter on all sorts of missions, you can create an entire fleet and you can recruit for that fleet as well. Um, so obviously that's like a separate part of the game that you can grow and develop and you, you can send them on time-based missions and I, I think they're called explorations, yes they are, and those explorations are uh, basically there to bring you back resources um, they are really lucrative and they are a fantastic way for you to earn money while you're not actually having to do the work yourself so your crew um, your fleet will be able to go and do those things for you and then they'll just come back and you'll reap the rewards and the benefits um, I was lucky enough to get my freighter because I saved a freighter from attack I went onto the freighter and the the owner of the freighter basically said I've had enough of all of this hard work I want you to own the freighter and I'll just captain it for you and he kind of said it in his alien language by the way but he just sort of handed over the keys and said it's all yours so I was really lucky in that sense because I didn't feel like it was going to be a long time um, I thought it was going to be a long time before I was able to get a hold of a new freighter so I got my freighter um, and I built essentially the the necessities that were on the freighter that was required for you to do explorations and I sent my freighter on its first exploration um, I haven't seen what come back yet but I will be sure to show you guys as well what does come back but from what you're seeing on the screen here you can get a list um, of different explorations that can happen at the same time based on the number of ships within your fleet so all of those all of those fleet missions will come back within a certain time frame and the longer the time frame that you send them away and the higher the difficulty obviously you're reaping better rewards for those things and there's like a little um, upgrade module system that you can equip for each mission so these are little things that you can craft that sort of up the ability to bring back better rewards and I, I don't know just 
just in, in total, I think this whole thing is just amazing. And outside of the game, which feels like a complete game as it is, there's just another little game that you can play with as well. So you've kind of got a crafting game, this whole build a fleet and an exploration type of mission game. And then you've just got the campaign that as well that you just have so many things to do. It's just amazing. So crafting and resources, we talked a little bit about that, but they've upped the resources um, a lot more. They've added extra resources to the game. And from what I see with crafting at the moment, they've just made it a lot easier. So the way I sort of saw it um, when I first jumped into No Man's Sky Next was by crafting these three things that you see in on the screen in front of you now, these are portable machines that do a lot of work for you within, within crafting and to help you find places within the game. The first one is the portable refiner. The refiner helps you take the ores and the minerals that you have and and pretty much improve them. Um, so you can you can take um, something like chlorite or you can take something like um, carbon and you can turn it into a much more compatible version that you might need for a recipe and it's a stronger version essentially and where you can sort of sometimes within the worlds or within within some of the planets you can find the better version of that mineral or that material it's not always easy to find and if you need it for um, a blueprint or to create something then the refiner is a way to do it for you it just takes like a little bit of fuel and takes some of the original materials and a little bit of waiting and you basically just carry these things around with you and place them when you need them the other one is the blueprint uh, what was it called the blueprint um, I've got to find it for you here um, but basically the it's it's a blueprint machine that helps you discover um, new blueprints and you can get things like um, you can get decorations for your house or you can get extra building modules and things like that um, and you can again you carry that machine around with you and when you get when you get the materials that you need you chuck it in the blueprint reader and it'll find the new blueprint for you or you can choose which one you want and um, you'll essentially grow your list of blueprints that you understand um, the other one is the home base it's like a it's basically like a portable home base and you can craft as many of these as you want and this goes back to your building capability you can place one build your home base and then go somewhere else and then you can place another, build another home base. And if you're lucky enough to have the blueprint for the teleporting system, then you can also craft teleporters and just go between all of your home bases. You can turn that home base into a communal home base for your friends so that they can jump into that as well. Um, and then they can probably teleport between them as well. And this really sort of unifies the game, doesn't it? Whereas the original No Man's Sky that did exist, it was kind of a feeling of isolation, which I kind of understand for, uh, I guess, a survival type game, but um, people really felt like the world was empty and felt like there wasn't access to a lot of things and there wasn't the ability to get to a lot of places. So this teleporting system within multiplayer and the addition of multiplayer uh, is just a really nice touch. And I think it makes it feel, makes the world feel uh, less out of reach and a little more sort of combined and unified as you would really want a game to be. Uh, so going through a little bit more, they talk about procedural stuff like technology. So if you pick up, say for example, a new multi-tool or if you pick up a new starship, there's just all procedurally generated technologies that you're going to get within it. Sometimes you get really bad stuff. Sometimes it's really broken. Sometimes you get really good stuff. And I kind of like this RNG type, you know, whatever happens, happens kind of thing, because it just makes you explore a little bit more and it gives you the opportunity to sometimes find something amazing. And it makes that wow moment really, really stand out. Um, but at the same time, sometimes you just just don't have the luck at all when you just need to keep trying I like that in the game um, I think that was a good improvement um, the visor enhancements it just talks about how the UI and the visor has been refined and it's a lot easier to use I won't go into too much detail about that missions and structures they've overhauled all the missions they've added a lot of things to the missions like photography feeding animals freighter attacks um, defense archaeology there's a lot of stuff in those missions now and essentially when you go to your space stations you'll be able to see um, people who have different missions and they'll give you missions based on any of those categories you'll build ranking within guilds and then you'll have access to more missions as well graphical enhancement the graphical overhaul was really really good i feel like the textures the terrain the the particle effects everything was a lot better and you look at the character models i think the detail is really really good um, especially you're in the third person mode the lighting and, and the actual texture of the the suits and the armors are just they're just top notch and the game it looks absolutely fantastic mind you i am playing on pc and i do have everything pumped all the way up i'm using I'm playing on 4K and everything's turned up as much as it can. Unlimited frames.
games and all that sort of stuff. But regardless, I think if you're playing on Xbox One X or if you're playing on PS4 Pro, I think you probably will get the advantage of a lot of those graphics as well. It does look really, really nice. They've done a great job. You can see in the picture there that they've really added a lot of detail even to the terrain alone. Um, so good on them for doing that. It does look a lot better. Uh, finally, well, I did say there was a UI overhaul, but th there's sort of a bit more accessibility to things that you need in more urgent um, situations. So a good example is back when No Man's Sky launched, people were talking about how you had to sort through your menu in an urgent time to be able to recharge your shield or to be able to recharge your fuel at your ship or something like that. Now they've added to the menu system, and if you're playing on a controller, um, I play on an Xbox One controller, good old uh, Scorpio edition um the the d-pad is actually used to enable a lot of these things so they've they've made it they've made it really easy um so basically on the d-pad if you press down on the d-pad you can access things that need immediate recharging and if you press up on the d-pad then you have access to other parts of the menu that you need immediately as well um and it's just an easy cycle system they've done a really good job of that the um the controller i feel like is the best method of controlling i didn't really like the way the keyboard felt but maybe that's just me because i was used to it from back when playing in the on the ps4 but um i I like I like playing on the controller better. If you're playing on PC and you have an Xbox controller, in my opinion, the, the way it plugged and played like that was was by far the best option. And it just felt seamless and the menu feels a little bit better. Um, but from what you see in the picture here, the little battery thing is for recharging your equipment. So you just go bang, bang, and it automatically select the thing you need the most. It's really quick and easy. You can use the same system when you're flying around in your ship. You might be fighting pirates, your shield's getting low. You just go bang, 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 shield's recharged. In the middle of a fight, I think that's super important. Um, and the addition was absolutely crucial for the combat to feel a little more seamless. Uh, there's not a lot more, but in, on the space stations, they've turned it into a little bit more of a marketplace. There's a lot more NPCs to talk to. There's a lot of things that you can pick up along the way. I really like that. All the space stations do look the same, though, and I feel like they could have really utilized different skins and outlooks in those space stations. When you're outside the space station, they do all look a little bit different sometimes, but when you actually go inside, they all have the same, exactly the same layout. And that's fine, you know, it's fine. The NPCs are all still a little bit different. Um, I will say, though, if you are going to pick up the game, or if you've already got the game, every single space station has an exosuit upgrade. That's a massive addition because exosuit upgrades were super, super rare before. You had to search for them, then you had to repair those drop pods, and it was just a nightmare to in order to get yourself one extra slot on your exosuit. Now, every new space station that you find, you'll have access to getting your exosuit upgrade there. So it kind of, in a sense, it promotes you to find new star systems because then you'll get a new space station, then you you get another upgrade and it kind of promotes the fact that the further you get into the game the bigger your inventory space will become in that exosuit um, i really like it i'm very impressed with the way they have done that with the space stations uh, they fixed you know some exploration stuff the flora and fauna is a little better i like the way that they've created um, the creatures sort of moving in mobs now um, i think the ai and the creatures are a little bit better i think when you feed them they fix some of the ai interactions there so they've done you know a lot of upgrades there i won't talk about the audio there's a a lot of patch notes there in the list there i'll leave a link in the description if you want to look a little bit more into these patch notes but i think i've talked a really long time already about it let's jump into some gameplay i'm going to show you guys my crazy reactions to some of the situations i've put myself in um, some of the stuff i've discovered a long way you can have a look at how good the graphics actually are and uh, you can also see how multiplayer plays as well Well, this is uh, truly happening. Finally getting to have a test here. I love it. I'm on this uh, little frozen planet and it's actually, I think it's quite a nice planet actually. Thank you very much. It is, it is quite a nice planet. Okay, I said it. There it is. And, uh, oh, well, this is my, uh, We've got a terrain manipulator, bolt caster. Don't have the advanced mining yet. Um, Starship's still very basic. Exosuits had a couple of minor upgrades there. I'm holding a lot of crap at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, everything's going pretty well, I think. Yeah, yeah. Millennium. Fine requires our climate. It's not even worth that much. Why am I holding on to this? 
Might need it for something later, but nah, I don't think I need that. Get out of my exosuit. All right. We make sure there's nothing in there to pick up. No. We're going to pick that up and we are going to head off planet. That's right, folks. We're going to head off planet. I think we've done everything we came here to do. What are you looking at, Sentinel? Do I want some frostwort? No, I do not. I think I've scanned everything I have to scan. There's... I think of, oh, that's an animal. I think. Thank you, thank you. Alright, let's get out of here. Woohoo! Oh, I can warp to this one. Do it. I'm warping! Subspace signal detected. Scanner recharging. What is that? What is that? Message amplified. Source is planetary outpost. Hey, there's a space station. I, want, I just want the space station. Let's go to the space station first. We'll go. We'll go back there later. Access to upgrade. Oh. And what are you going to give me for earning half a million credits? Going to give me more credits? That'd be nice. Hey, officer, what you got? The downbeat life form is studying the image of an another young warrior on their pad. The pictured warrior looks virile. And impressive. They have facial tendrils that are outstretched. They appear rich and have good breeding stock. The look in its eyes is sultry. The life form looks to me with questioning eyes. They clearly, they clearly need someone to talk this through with. Advise acceptance. Oh, let's try that. Generous gifts and a candid image of the life form I will one day wed. <laughs> that is awesome. 38 nanite clusters. Well, look at me. I mean, me and this other fantastic looking creature would make amazing babies. Um, that's enough. Thank you. That is enough. Alright, so while we're here, I'm going to show you guys the character creation and customization. This is fantastic. It's a great addition to the game. It is amazing. And so what you're seeing in front of you is it's just merely a crazy creation that I made for fun. Um, there's a whole heap of presets sitting over here and I'll be able to show you that. But first, you just, and I will, I'll allow it for you guys. I will lose what I've got. It will give you some randomized stuff just by clicking on the different options. And there's the Daft Punks. And the Travelers are really cool. They've got a lot of different heads. The Gek. I like the Gek. Aren't they cool? Lots of cool space helmet options with the anomaly. <laughs> so anyway, these are the presets. There's presets for each race. I like the gold horns there, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, let's go to Anomaly, Presets. Hey, that's that's really cool. I like that one a lot. And yeah, so there's just all these different options. They're, they're all unique and different. Um, there's your uh, Stormtrooper style dude. I like that. And, you know, same too with every species, I suppose. 
Oh wow, look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. <laughs> and yeah, so you you kind of get an idea of, you know, but let's let's actually customize something, shall we? Let's uh, you know, just for the fun of it. Let's customize. Let's just customize an anomaly because it's what a lot of people's going to be, let's be honest. So, what we want to do is we want a signal booster, and we want use the input data first. We'll see what happens. Scan for secure frequencies. Come on, give me what I'm after. I hear there's some good things with uh, secure. A manufacturing facility, that sounds perfect. Let's do that. I hear there's some good loot. Oh, it's in that planet? It's on that planet. Alright, well, I'm going to take you back. We're going to go to that planet right now. Quick, let's get onto it. Why can't I... Oh, didn't finish reloading. Let's be quick. I need to upgrade that, don't I? Alright. Come on. The alarm has locked the terminal. Security scanners appear slow and slowly turn towards me. A message displays itself letter by letter on the terminal. Cut the camera feed. Cut the alarm. Cut the heat sensors. There we go. Okay, I got away though. Yeah, you did. But where's your ship back there? Just wait. Yeah. So you'll, you'll have like a notoriety sort of thing, a ranking. It's kind of like yeah, they, they look Nefer's Hot Pursuit. Now. Yeah. So you got to wait for that to go down before you're fully safe. But just get your ship and bring it up here. I am about to open up um, an exosuit upgrade for both of us. Oh, lovely. I just need some Not oxygen. Enough fuel. There we go. Yeah, um, the... When you scan the planet, it tells you what type of sentinels you've got. And they call these sentinels something like, um... Innocence Preservation. So they basically follow you around to make sure that you don't do anything wrong. <laughs> so they're a little bit different here, they're a bit more aggressive. Yeah, they're rather more aggressive. 
yeah, they were, they were just following you around. It was funny. So I've got pretty much everything for this, uh, except the ionized combust in the machine now. Yeah, it is coming out right now. All right, I'm gonna unlock this for us so we can get an upgrade. Repair that. Repair that. Oh, I need four more ionized cobalt. Do you have any cobalt at all? Uh, I think so. Ah, here we go. Nice. Just pop it in the machine for me. I only need four. Oh, directly to you. Oh, okay. Because nice. I had the ionized one. Guy. Oh, perfect. Oh, that is a huge caterpillar. Some, some interesting creatures here. I really don't like this whole solar system, though. Hey, uh, there it is. Upgrade exosuit. Of course we're going to upgrade it. There you go. You should be able to do it. I can see it's a three star now. Who's gaining notoriety? He is, just by flying around, living. <laughs> he survived for too long. Three stars. Alright, 15 seconds until I'm there. Same. Oh, no, it just jumped up to 30. I'm, I'm actually following... Behind you. I'm following the bounty. I think I've got the bounty. Where is he? Yep, there he is. Hey, where are you? Seven seconds. Alright, I'm just going to follow him around. That's it. Start right, shooting him. Tail. Start shooting him. Oh. We got him. I hit him with the missiles, but I took a lot of damage. Is he dead? Yeah, he's done. There we go. Now I can swing around on him. Yeah. It's not letting me fight him. Because right, I'm definitely hit. hitting him. And it's just not doing anything. That's a weird... Thing they have. Yeah, I don't think it's purpose. I think something just glitched. There you go. He's destroyed. Alright, down he went. Nice. Did you get something for that? Did it say anything? I got lemium and chromatic metal. <laughs> you want to check these eggs, don't you? These places are great. Oh, here they come. Wow, there's quite a few of them too. They don't have, but they don't have health bars. How do you know how, how they're going? Yeah, I don't know. Whoop. They're really glitchy as well. Like it, it seems like a teleport doesn't really feel like a teleport. They all ran away. There's only one left, isn't there? Oh no. There's a few on the other side. That's alright, let's just keep shooting eggs. Are you supposed to shoot them or pick them the up? So? I don't know. Then why are they coming? Didn't you did you interact with them? I sh I I mined it. Can you mine them? 
Is that what you got the, the pearl out of? No, it was something else I got the pearl out of. Yeah, I just got a, um... Yeah, I just got a big shiny ball out of it. Well, I saw it come out and I didn't grab it in time. Oh, yeah. I haven't grabbed it yet because they're, they're all, all over now. Oh, I'm actually killing, killing them this time. They're actually, I'm actually seeing them die now. Maybe it was just a graphical glitch. Yeah, sometimes they disappear and sometimes they actually explode into green. Oh wow, my um... I'm not in a good place actually. Didn't know that. Yeah, no, I took a bit of damage there. I'm dead. Dude, I'm dead. So there you have it guys, I thought that was a really good place to leave it because I do end up going back there and um, I do end up finding a way to profit from those eggs by myself but not without there being a lot of trouble that comes along with it. So if you want to see those shenanigans, that'll probably be in the next video. Uh, if you did like this video, and I do apologise for the length of it because uh, I just wanted to show you guys a really good mix of all the different types of gameplay elements involved and I really wanted to get into at least a little bit of detail with the patch notes that I thought were important. But like I said, if you do like this video, Video. If you thought it was informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you do get the next of my No Man's Sky series. Until next time, I'll catch you then. Mm -hmm.